Okay, welcome back. If you are watching this, you saw my computer die. So I had to move it. We're in a different room, a little closer to the ground as well. So don't be surprised if there's a Jackie appearance during this lesson. Okay, this is AD and choking. Okay, we're gonna get with the AD. The AD will be quick. No, uh, no uh, activities with that because I can't think of a way to uh, mimic an AD for you to demonstrate your ability to use it. <clears throat> However, choking, on the other hand, is a, is a skill that you may use tomorrow. Okay, that it's a skill that you may use uh, relatively quickly. Um, Miss Status uses it or has used it quite a bit. I, on the other hand, have not. Knock on wood. We're gonna move this down here because it seems like the best place and we're gonna go on from there. Okay, again, take notes. Um, if there's something you need to um, write down, there's going to be a knowledge check at the end. That's your activity for this one. And um, we'll go from there just because I don't know how to um, demonstrate choking without a model and assuming um, if you're by yourself, that's going to be hard to do. So with that being said, there's going to be a knowledge check. Okay, but still, no choking. All right, so AED. Our AED in school, um, I think I mentioned it earlier, is located to the left of the cafeteria as you're walking in. It's right underneath the um, Baron Pride Award winners for the quarter uh, pictures. Um, it's right there. It's a nice little box with a glass front, and it's in there. It's a little contraption. It comes with the AD itself. Comes with the pads, um, pediatric pads. We have at the at the middle school. And why do you think we have pediatric pads? Okay, it's not for you per se, because you are going to use the adult um, pads. It's for um, someone who is younger than eight and less than 55 pounds, which shouldn't be anybody in the middle school. But why do you think we have them at the middle school? For what purpose do you think a, a person who is younger than eight, less than 55 pounds, would be in that building? Okay, dramatic pause. Sporting events, concerts, parent-teacher conferences, open house, um, science fair, any activity, extracurricular event that's going on in the middle school poses an opportunity for um, a younger child who's under eight and weighs less than 55 pounds to be in the building. So that's why we have the pediatric pads. Um, you can use adult pads on um, a child of that size. We will go over that either in one of these videos, we'll explain how you do that. It's just the placement of the pads, okay? The smaller pads have less shock to them. It's not as intense as the adult pads. And then just the placements are different, okay? So moving on, here's the first video. And AEDs are simple to use, okay? For someone in cardiac arrest, calling 911 or the designated emergency number, starting CPR immediately, and using an AED as soon as possible, gives the person the best chance for survival. Cardiac arrest can occur when the electrical impulses that cause the heart to contract rhythmically become abnormal, disorganized, and chaotic. The heart will stop beating or beat too ineffectively to circulate blood to the brain and other vital organs. Two abnormal heart rhythms in particular, ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia, can often be corrected by defibrillation, the electrical shock delivered by an AED. When effective, the shock disrupts the abnormal electrical activity long enough to allow the heart to spontaneously develop an effective rhythm on its own. An AED is simple to use. The device will guide you every step of the way. AEDs can be used on people of all ages and can also be used on pregnant women. All you need to do is turn the device on and follow the voice and visual prompts. Remember, start CPR immediately and use an AED as soon as possible. For each minute that CPR and AED use are delayed, the person's chance of survival is reduced by about 
Okay, so as you heard, ADs will increase the uh, likelihood of somebody to have a full recovery of um, cardiac arrest, okay? So we need to move on. Next video, please. This is gonna come out. Oh, you little stinky little booger. Um, let's see. Oh, that'll work. All righty, now let's see. This one, I think I want this one. Okay, so this is gonna go through the AD. This is about the time where I take our uh, trainer. We do have a trainer. It doesn't like me, so it doesn't really work for me, but what's nice about it, it comes with the carrying case that you would likely see on our AD at school. It has, in that case, it'll have um, the pediatric pads. It'll have, well, the pediatric pads might be in a container behind the AD, but it'll have scissors because you need to cut the shirt open like you see in this video at the beginning of the video. Does not matter if it's male or female. The shirt comes off. The undergarments come off. They are dead. Okay, if you're using an AED, they are dead. They don't care if they're bare chested. Okay, you with me so far? So cut the shirt. The pads have to be skin to skin contact. Okay, so you have that. There's um, um, a cloth to wipe off or a towel, so to speak, a cloth to wipe off if they're wet or sweaty. Um, there's a razor. You're like, Mr. McAllister, what do they need a razor for? Okie dokie, I'm glad you asked that and I saw it in your face. Anyway, you need the razor in case the chest is really hairy, okay? If you can't see skin, you have to shave it. Don't worry about shaving cream. There's no shaving cream there. Dry shave it. They're dead. Okay? They're dead. They're not going to feel it. They're dead. And you don't have to make it all pretty just so you get some skin because the pads have to be touching skin. Okay? Now, when we're talking shaving a chest, I mean, like if somebody's chest has this much hair, you're probably going to want to shave it because that's pretty thick. You're not gonna, it's not going to stick to my face. Okay? So if my chest looked like this, you're going to have to shave my chest. Okay, my chest doesn't look like that, so don't be getting any ideas. Anywho, we're talking for all you Star Wars fans. If the person looks like Chewbacca, you're going to have to shave their chest. But if you can see chest, the AD should work. Okay, you with me? All right. Then there are. I think that might be it. There could be something else there. Without it here, I can't remember. Okay, so we're going to watch the video. Hopefully, they'll show everything that's in there while they're while they're doing it, and we'll go from there. Okay, enjoy. When a person is in cardiac arrest, use of an AED can help restore a normal heartbeat. If you are the only trained responder on the scene, turn on the AED as soon as it is available Remove and follow the voice from prompts. Person's chest. Once the AED is turned on, remove all clothing covering the chest and wipe the chest dry if necessary. Using the appropriate sized pads, place one pad on the upper right side of the chest and the other on the lower left side of the chest below the armpit. Remember, you should not use the pediatric AED pads or key on anyone older than eight years or weighing more than 55 pounds. However, adult AED pads can be used on a child if pediatric AED pads are not available. If the pads touch, which is usually the case with small children and infants, place one pad in the middle of the chest and the other pad on the back between the shoulder blades. Plug the pad connector cable into the AED if necessary and prepare to let the AED analyze the heart's rhythm. Make sure no one, including you, is touching the person. Say clear, clear in a loud, commanding voice. Be ready to deliver a shock if the AED determines one is needed. To do this, make sure no one, including you, is touching the person. Again, 
Say clear in a loud, Everyone commanding voice. Clear. Push the shock Push button the shock. to deliver the shock. Shock delivered. After the AED delivers the shock, or if no shock is advised, immediately begin CPR starting with compressions. Continue giving CPR and following the AED's prompts until you see an obvious sign of life or EMS personnel arrive. If there are two or more responders, the steps will be slightly different. Responder 1 will continue CPR, while Responder 2 sets up the AED. When the AED prompts, analyzing heart rhythm, Responder 2 says, clear. Then the responders switch roles. Responder 1 will now operate the AED, and Responder 2 will now provide CPR. The responder should switch roles in this manner each time the AED analyzes the heart rhythm. Notice how CPR and AED use are working together as parts of the cardiac chain of survival. When CPR is not interrupted to prepare the AED, chances of survival are increased. Okay, we're going to watch a couple of these parts again, okay, just because they need further explanation. And then, uh, let's see. When using the appropriate sized pads, place one pad on the upper right side of the chest and the other on the lower left side of the chest below the armpit. Okay, now here, why do you think, well, one thing, you get your AED, it's got pictures. So it's going to show you exactly where to put these pads, okay? Then, so you got here, chest, rib cage. Okay, if you didn't notice, the AED tells you exactly what to do and when to do it. So my question is, why does this pad have to go over here and this pad over here? Okay, dramatic pause. It's so the electric current can go across. Okay, you want it to go across because then it's going to go through the heart. If this pad is touching this pad, they're just going to go right next to each other and it's not going to hit the heart. The whole point of this is to get that electric shock through the heart. Okay, you with me? All right, so moving on. Remember, you should not use the pediatric AED pads or key on anyone older than eight years or weighing more than 55 pounds. However, adult AED pads okay, can be used on a second. child if pediatric AED pads are not available. If the pads touch, which is usually the case with small children and infants, place one pad in the middle of the chest and the other pad on the back between the shoulder blades. Okay, now, I didn't expect it to switch like that that fast. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so again, pads are not touching. Y front and back so that the electric shock will go through the heart. Okay, these pediatric pads, the voltage is lighter, so they're not getting as strong of a shock. So when you use the adult pads on them, they're just going to get the full blown shock. Okay, so that's the difference between them. You can't use the pediatric pads on the adult because the shock won't be strong enough. All right, here we go. Add connector cable into the AED if necessary and prepare to let the AED analyze the heart's rhythm. Make sure no one, including you, is touching the person. All right, so now we're analyzing the patient or the victim. Why do you as the responder not want to be touching the victim while um, the AED is analyzing? Dramatic pause. Okay, the reason for that is if you're touching the victim, the AED is going to analyze you. So then it's going to say, okay, it's going to detect a normal active heart. And it's going to say um, shock not needed. Okay, when in reality is shock is needed. So you're not touching. You can't, anybody around you can't touch. So you have to let them know that the machine is analyzing 
So you need to say clear. But you can't be a soft weakling clear thing, you know, like you're trying to hide conversation from your teacher. It's a firm, confident, clear. Clear. So they hear you, they know they got to clear. Okay? You're going to see that again when it's time for the shock. Say clear. Clear. In a loud, commanding voice. Be ready to deliver a shock if the AED determines one is needed. To do this, make sure no one, including you, is touching the clear again. Okay, again. Now we're at the shock part. If the machine declares a shock and you're touching the victim when the shock is given, what's going to happen to you? You're going to get shocked. Okay, so there needs to be a clear. And again, a situation like this is going to be chaotic. It has to be a firm, clear. It can't be a passive communication piece. You have to be firm and um, direct. Say clear in a loud, commanding voice. Push the shock button to deliver the shock. shock okay. Delivered. I think that's everything we need to do on this one. So further explanation. Blah, 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 blah. All right, moving on. So everybody understands that. Again, we can't demonstrate this one because no one has an AED and your teacher is not creative enough to um, come up with a way to do it. Choking. Boom, is that dude choking? Absolutely choking. All right, this is probably the most important skill that you're, or most, maybe not, yeah, it's probably the most important skill. This skill here, you may, is more likely you'll use this than any other skill, okay? If you don't believe me, email Dadis and ask her, okay? She has 100 kids over at her house. I don't know. I think she said 75 is there. It's something crazy. But um, a lot of kids, and depending on their age group, and we all know she has at least uh, uh, one toddler over there right now. Um, and you know, Chubbs is three, I think, but, um, the younger ones, they learn by putting things in their mouth. Okay. So, uh, Mrs. Dadis, I believe if I recall, she'll probably correct me, but I think she has, um, did the Heimlich on all of her kids at least once. I'm not sure about Chubbs. I haven't heard anything, but at least the other ones, um, a lot of ways you can, you can be choking. If you're talking while you're eating, you're eating too fast, or for some reason somebody makes you laugh and, and it gets in your, in your throat. And then you feel it in there and then you panic and it kind of lodged in there. Okay, the universal sign for choking is this. A lot of people will grab their throat like this. Okay, you see this arrow? It's a lot easier because you know the screen can't see my hand. It's kind of like that, okay? So you see somebody choking, you go up to them, you have to get consent. Say your name, my name is Ms. McAllister, I'm first aid certified, I think you're choking, can I help you? They're probably going to say yes, they're not going to actually say yes, like yes, they're going to nod, okay, because if they can talk, you want them to talk, they're getting air, okay, they're not going to be able to talk, so they're going to nod. You're going to direct somebody in a firm voice, to call 911. Call 911. Then you're going to give them five back blows. Now, these aren't soft back blows. They're hard back blows. Okay, don't be, don't be softening it up because that helps bring get that thing to come back up. Okay, and then you're going to do five abdominal thrust. Okay, now, in the past, we would have you as the rescuer find their navel. Okay, we are talking about their belly button. A navel is a belly button. We're not talking about the armed forces. Okay, so the navel is the belly button. Find their belly button, and then you're going to, I believe it's um, just above their belly button, but have them find their belly button. So they find it, you put, you make a fist, put the top of that fist right above their belly button. Your other hand is going to cup it, so you're going to do a big kind of hug, and then you're going to scoop. So you're going in and up. The object is to get it to come out. So you want that uh, vomiting motion, 
okay? The muscles that help regurgitate stuff, help you throw up when you're not feeling all that well, that's what you want it to do. It's, it's a, lot, a lot of times they'll probably just kind of shoot out the mouth a little bit, the object, not vomit. Now, if you practice on somebody and you go in there too much, they might vomit on you. So, you know, you may not want to do all that stuff. Okay. So you're going to, we got a video for it. I'm pretty sure you're going to bend the person over. You need a strong base. I don't have anybody to model this for me, so I can't really show you. You're going to have a strong base. So you want staggered feet so you can hold them. Now you're going to, Take your arm and go across, across their chest, okay? You're gonna bend them forward. So your arms across their chest. This is not a good example. Your arms across your chest. Mine's probably still gonna be like this, okay? And then you give them the back blows, okay? Now, myself, I'm 230 pounds. You're probably not close to that. If we don't get that out, I'm not getting oxygen, I'm gonna become unconscious. If I become unconscious and you don't have a strong base and you're holding on to me, what do you think is gonna happen? You are going to the ground, okay? No matter what, you're going to the ground. So you need a strong base. And if the person does fall, try to protect their head or kind of soften that fall as best you can. I'm telling you now, if, if, if it's me or your parents, we're taking you down, you're going, okay? So make sure you give good forceful back blows and then your five abdominal thrusts, so five and five. If the person goes unconscious and they're on the ground, you're probably gonna have to roll them over. Arm goes up, like I said, I'll put a video on Schoology for this. Arm goes up, you're going to roll the person towards you. So if the person is that way, this arm's up and gonna roll me this way. If the arm's down, you're not gonna roll because your arm gets in the way, gets kind of blocked. Okay, and again, I'll show you that video, so don't stress it, don't try to picture it. Wait till Dadis comes on with one of the kiddos, okay? Then you're gonna start out with your 30 compressions. You already know they're choking. Go straight to 30 compressions. You're going to do two breaths, but you got to check first because you already know they're choking. So check. If you see it, scoop it. Index finger for an adult, baby, pinky. Okay? If you get it, great. 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions, two breaths. Boom, boom, boom. If they're unconscious. Okay? The compressions are important because it's going to push that thing up. Okay, with me so far? Cool, moving on. Let's see, if, here we go. Apparently, ooh, do I have? I do have, okay. Recognizing choking, I don't think I need to see, I think this one's good. Nope. Uh, let's do this one. Sorry, that's the infant. Let's do this one. Okay, because it's live. After confirming that the person is choking and obtaining consent, okay, staggered feet. a combination feet. of five back blows and five abdominal thrusts. First, position yourself to the side and slightly okay. behind the staggered person. Staggered feet, Bend the person arms across. So that his upper body is as Bend parallel over. to the ground as possible. Firmly strike the person between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. Give five back blows. After the fifth back blow, reposition yourself to stand with one foot in front of the other, placing your front foot in between the person's feet to provide balance and stability. Find his navel with two fingers from one hand. With your other hand, make a fist and place the thumb side against the person's stomach, right above your fingers. Cover the fist with your other hand. Give five abdominal thrusts, pulling inward and upward. Continue giving sets of five back blows and five abdominal thrusts until the object is forced out and the person can cough forcefully, speak, or breathe. Or if the person becomes unresponsive, 
If the person becomes unresponsive, send someone to call 911 if it has not already been done. Carefully lower the person to a firm flat surface and immediately begin CPR, starting with compressions if you are trained. For a child, you might need to kneel in order to give effective back blows and abdominal thrusts. After confirming that the person. Okay, now in this video, the back thrust or the back. Uh... Yeah, no, the back, the back blows weren't very hard. That's because it's a training situation. You're not going to do it hard on uh, in a training in a training session to a real person, but they need to be forceful. Okay, they need to be firm, hard back blows. Okay, her back blows weren't getting that thing out. Now they did show the kid if they're significantly shorter than you, you get on one knee and you do it. Now, in my case, as you know, that I'm as tall as a you know a bush okay i'm not uh, i'm not very tall so if the person is taller than me um i can have them kneel so that i can give the back blows and the uh abdominal thrusts okay now um if you can't reach around then you have to do um what does she call them you're gonna push in and up on their belly from the front, okay, if they're a large person. Um, person in a wheelchair, you're going to um, push the wheelchair up against the wall so it doesn't go anywhere, and you're going to push in and up from the front again, okay, trying to mimic that same thing. Um, let's see, I think there's another one, but I can't think of it. Um, you'll probably ask, so moving on. Okay, now the baby one. We're gonna hold this thought real quick. Let me get this big. The baby's gonna be different, okay? And this one's a mannequin, and everybody likes babies because they're small and they're cute and they're like fragile. Oh, so cute. If they're choking, they're gonna die. Let that sink in for a second. If they're choking, they're gonna die. So you have to get that thing out, okay? You have to get it out. Now the back blows are hard, okay? The back is the strongest part of your body. It's huge muscle. The baby's gonna be fine, okay? This video always gets the heebie-jeebies to, to you guys when you're in the classroom. So I want to emphasize it has to be firm. It has to be hard. You have to get that thing out. Okay. So here we go. After confirming that the infant is choking and obtaining consent, give a combination of five back blows and five chest thrusts. First, place your forearm along the infant's back cradling the back of her head with your hand. Place your other forearm along the infant's front, supporting her jaw with your thumb and fingers. Do not cover the infant's mouth. Turn the infant over and lower her onto your thigh so she is face down with her head lower than her chest. Get okay. You don't want to cover their mouth. I want to give it to you simply because there's some choking and needs to come out the mouth. Okay, so don't cover the mouth. They're down at this angle so gravity can help you. Okay, because you know, gravity's gonna help pull that out. All right, that's why their head is lower than your knee. Okay, here we go. Give five back blows. Firmly strike the infant between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. Then reposition the infant. Place one hand along the infant's back cradling the back of the infant's head with your hand. Next, turn her over so she is face up with her head lower than her chest. Give five chest thrusts. Place two fingers in the center of the infant's chest. 
just below the nipple line. Press down about one and a half inches, then let the chest return to its normal position. Continue giving sets of five back blows and five chest thrusts until the object is forced out and the infant can cough forcefully, cry, or breathe, or until she becomes unresponsive. Okay, now if the baby's crying, that's good. Because if it's crying, they're getting air in there. Okay, now at some point, hopefully that comes out before it happens, they sometimes will take that big panicking um, cry. Well, in that case, they may lodge that thing further down in there. So um, be firm, use gravity to your advantage, and don't cover their mouth. And you're using chest thrust with two fingers. Cool. If you have questions, make sure you ask. Ah, come on. Ooh, is that it? That might be it. Let's see. Let's go back one. And we'll... All right, that is it. Okay, so that concludes our AED and choking lesson. Um, so. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Schoology. There should be a knowledge check in the, the lesson three, right? Lesson three folder. And um, go ahead and complete that. You should get your score at the end. Again, if you have questions, hop on that Flipgrid, ask us, and we get them answered for you. All right, have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Maybe. <laughs>